Yo guys, we are back. Uh, we have another video tonight. We are going to be discussing a situation this summer I am incredibly excited for. Now, amidst all the drama going on in the FIFA community, I actually haven't posted on this channel in like two or three days. As I said with this channel, like you guys have been showing some crazy love. Um, I've been really enjoying it. It's only beginning. We're going to be doing so much stuff this summer. I'm very excited. You guys have been loving the watch along, some of the different videos we've been doing. It's just a fun channel for me to go ahead and make videos on. And I'm very excited to make this video today because we're going to kind of do our first look at the Euro. Um, I just caught the end of the Liverpool game. Um, and we're going to be now taking our first look at the Euro, which is actually exactly almost a month away. You know, by the time you see this video, it's pretty much a month away, right? Because it's going to be starting on June 14th. Can you believe it? I know it's something really nice, though, because it is something to look forward to. I, these major tournaments are crazy, crazy awesome. We're also going to be doing a video on Copa, and we'll definitely be doing another video closer to the Euro where we'll kind of make some predictions, and we'll see how it's feeling with kind of every, uh, I guess, domestic league wrapped up and, and just see how we're feeling. But we'll do a video on Copa this week as well. It's just going to be kind of an intro video uh, for everyone kind of to get their brain and, you know, everyone who's clicking on this video just to kind of understand what we're expecting and what we will see. So we have Group A with Germany, Scotland, Hungary, and Switzerland. Uh, we have Group B with Spain, Croatia, Italy, Albania. That is going to be a very tough group. Um, group A, you know, with the form Germany is in, you'd expect Germany will probably just go through and win that group. But Germany have really struggled in the recent few tournaments. They have a lot of different situations now. They've got in my opinion, a very informed team individually, and they are also at home for this tournament. So I would expect them to at least get out and get second. You would expect in that group them to get first. You never know, though. Switzerland is always tough. They always, I feel like, are overperforming in a lot of these tournaments. Scotland don't always do great, but they do have the passion, and Hungary are a very um, disciplined defensive team at times. So they've played Hungary. The last time they played Germany, I think I remembered it was... Um, I can't really remember what it was. It might have been Nations League, but they they did pretty well against Germany. So it's still not an easy group, but you would expect Germany to get out of that. Uh, we're just introing the groups right now. You got Spain, Croatia, Italy, Albania. Look, I mean, Spain, Spain is Spain. Spain will always be great. Um, and and they've got a lot of younger players really playing well right now. They're a good team. They will hold the ball. They are a possession based team. Croatia is a very disciplined team. They have been doing very well on and off throughout the major tournaments in the last. Uh, you could say last couple of tournaments, including World Cup specifically. Um, Italy just won the last Euro. Italy are the winners of the last Euro. They beat um, England in the uh, in the final in penalties, I believe. And then they didn't end up qualifying for the World Cup. Crazy. Uh, and then you have Albania as well. I actually don't know too much about Albania, but I would assume in that group, Albania would be a huge Cinderella story if they get out. Group C, we've got Slovenia, Denmark, Serbia, and England. Um, I think this group is a little bit easier than people think for England, especially with the way they play football under Southgate. England, you can make the argument, are the most talented team by squad look in this tournament. Will they come together? Will they play the right brand of football under Southgate? That's been the question mark. Southgate has really kept his job because of how they've, uh, I guess, because of how they placed it the last Euro. Um, and, you know... It's one of those ones, man. Serbia, not going to be an easy team. Slovenia, not going to be an easy team. And definitely Denmark is not going to be an easy team. Denmark overperformed, I believe. Uh, I don't know if it was the World Cup or the Euro. I can't remember which one they overperformed in recently, but they, they did do very well. I think they won the group in one of the recent tournaments. I need to polish up my knowledge a little bit. It's not super relevant because we have to live in the present, and this is what we're dealing with. And we got Group D, Netherlands, France, Poland, Austria. I believe Poland. I can't remember if it was Poland that hardly made this tournament. I think Poland is not as good anymore in my opinion but i could be shocked i would expect in this group netherlands and france to take care of business you would austria as well never a super easy one in group e i think low-key actually this is the least amount of pressure we've had on a belgian team because now everybody's kind of assuming with hazard gone that the golden era is done and to be honest belgium i think could really do well um I, they're, they're actually one of the picks that i think could could surprise a lot of people. They're in a group with Slovakia, Ukraine, and Romania. I would expect Belgium to win this group. I think they uh they they I would give them a fair shot to do well in this tournament. I don't think they're good enough to win. Um group F we go to Portugal, uh the Czech Republic, Georgia, and Turkey. Uh that group, you know, obviously you would expect Portugal to come out. Who is going to be the second place team? That that is the question mark. And honestly, I probably couldn't tell you out of those three. I don't know who would get second. So for for a total of eight, twelve uh, 16, 20, we have 24 teams in this tournament. Um, and we're going to go through some stuff. So there's going to be four third place teams that will make the knockout. So that means that within, um, 
how many groups do we have? Six that only, what I think is that going to be, if we have two teams from each group, uh, it'd be 12. And then I don't know how many total we're, we're having not go through, but I think it, it, it would be like six plus, uh, if we have three third place teams, we'd have four third place teams. We probably have uh, eight teams not qualifying right off the bat, but we could probably just go here and run the numbers, right? Four, eight, um, 12 and 16. So my math was right. It, it is eight teams with 24 in the tournament. So yeah, that's kind of how we have that going. And then this is the official schedule. You know, we've got obviously, you know, opening match is always going to be Germany because they are hosting the tournament. Whoever hosts the tournament always has an opening match. They are playing in Munich versus Scotland in the opening match. I, I have to be honest, that's a very tough draw <laughs> for Scotland. There's a lot of, I mean, but at the same time, you could argue there's a lot of pressure on the, um, you know, on the, the team that's hosting. There always is. We've seen it in the past where a lot of teams have struggled uh, as the host team and there's a lot of pressure. So, we will see uh, how they fare. Uh, in, in day two, we have uh, Spain and Croatia to start the morning, which is just in the afternoon for a lot of you guys. That's a blessing within itself. What what a game. Dortmund, we're going to have uh, Dortmund Stadium. We're going to have Italy versus Albania. And then uh, we also will have, sorry, that's that's later in the day. The first game is going to be uh, Hungary versus Switzerland. Uh, then we have Slovenia, Denmark. We've got Serbia, England. So you guys get the point. We've got all these games going on. Um, some of the marquee games that I think we should be looking out for. Day two, we've got Spain, Croatia. Um, if we move past that a little bit, um, we have, I believe that, let's see what else, what other matchups am I, am I really liking here? I'm kind of, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse on here. I'm kind of going as we go. I think Denmark, England is always going to be really good. Um, you know, for me, I think that that one will be always great. We've got Spain, Italy. That one will be great. We've got Netherlands, France, um, a little bit more into the tournament there. I think Switzerland, Germany should be pretty good. Um, you know, we're not going to always know. We know that we know that we're going to see some battles of the top teams, Croatia, Italy, right? We will see some of those go on and 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 be great. But really, it, it's always great with these tournaments because as you get later on in a tournament, we always see these scenarios where this team has to win, this team could upset. That's the beauty of the group stage, right? You have one team playing three other teams, right? And it's so there is so much importance on winning those individual games because if you don't and you draw there's all these scenarios that start playing out of the group stage um and it just it just gets all crazy so i wanted to point this out too because not that i support any type of gambling uh i i just i just like to look at this stuff because i'm like hey how do the odds makers view this tournament all right these people it's a combination of data and it's a combination of where people are putting their money with given odds so right now england are the most favorite team in this tournament and i'm not here to tell you why or how a team is it's understandable. I, you know, I could assume that a lot of English people are going to be betting on England. They feel it's their time. France is the second favorite. Then you drop all the way down to Germany. But I'll tell you this. A couple months ago, Germany were plus 700 or plus 750 with Spain. They have jumped up a little bit here. And the reason for that is that Germany beat France in a friendly 2-0. And it was not by chance they dominated them. And, and it was a lot of the, the good players from both sides were playing in that match. And it's only a friendly, but they're also the host nation, which is going to help them a lot betting wise. Um, let's not, let's not put it past the fact that we've got an incredible amount of German players right now in the world playing insane, right? Form wise. So can they all collectively come together as a team and have success? We will see. Uh, France, the second favorite, no surprises there. They have the best player in the world, in my opinion, which is Kylian Mbappe. And they have a fully studded roster all around. They have crazy players. Um, they will have the same issue too. Can they all come together? France for the longest time was at the top and you know over the years in my opinion because of how great their midfield has always been if we even go back to the days of Vieira and Petit right we're even talking right now and the same thing you could even argue with the defenders right the great times of having Desai and Blanc and we even go back a little bit uh, a, little, a little while ago we're talking prime Varane we're talking prime Conte we're talking prime Pogba all right these are very essentials for France to be successful this is one of those scenarios where in the recent World Cup you know we saw France and Argentina go to um, you know, all the way to the end of that one. And we saw Mbappe really carry the team. All right, Mbappe is going to need a little bit more help for them to win this tournament. Although, um, you know, I actually think the pool of teams in this tournament, I don't think it's one of the highest skilled tournaments we've ever had. I think this tournament, out of any tournament we've ever had, we, we do have some room for some upsets. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a team, you know, somewhere down in the middle, Denmark, Croatia, um, you know, the Dutch are even less favored than I expected, right? Even Italy, right? Some of these teams that are maybe are not outright favorites, I think we could see them really make a run in this tournament. I, I, because I don't think right now there is an insane, insane team. I think we have a lot of talent on England. I think they're poorly managed. I think France have a lot of individuals, but are they going to be able to come together? Are they strong enough 
Are they strong enough collectively, defensively, and in the midfield to do this tournament, right? Germany are coming off some of the worst years in German national team football collectively. There's a lot of pressure on them to perform at home, right? Spain, Spain don't have that God squad they've always had, but Spain will always have talented players. Spain are good enough to win. They are. They they, they struggle at times, I think, I think, in the attack because if they don't have marquee, insane strikers and nines like they've had before with Torres. Um, and Villa and, and guys like that. And I think that's been a lot of importance on their runs of success. But they definitely have the players. Portugal have Cristiano Ronaldo right now, who in the last World Cup got benched for Goncalo Ramos and is now back at the peak of his powers, scoring 50 goals this year um, and playing well internationally. He's played well in the friendlies and, and they have a good team. They have a lot of individuals now that have been playing together now for a couple of tournaments. They have a lot of familiarity amongst them so i would expect them to make a bit of a run belgian i think have belgium have the least amount of pressure they've had on them ever and i actually think they have a really good squad we'll look at some of the squads in this video i don't want to go too long italy netherlands denmark croatia i can make arguments for all these teams because i think that those i think that the differential the top betting wise that we see where england is ten dollars to win 40 if they win the tournament and then you know the fact that you can bet you can bet 10 on Italy and 10 on Netherlands, right? If you bet 20 on England to win it, you only win 80. If you bet 10 on Italy and 10 on the Netherlands, you know, you're making way more. And, I, and I'm and i not I'm not surprised betting-wise it's that way, but at the same time as a football fan of knowing what's going on with these teams, it, it is a little surprising. So the last tournament, obviously, Italy uh, won in penalties against England. We all, we all watched that. Obviously, that was crazy. Portugal uh, won an extra time against France in 2016. Spain won in 20. This is the golden god tier era of Spain, by the way. If you didn't get to watch the Spain team, I feel bad for you. They arguably are the best team in football we have ever watched ever. The what this Spain team did to teams, I I can't even explain. And they 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 also won the World Cup in 2010. Do you know how crazy that is? Do you know how dominant you have to be as a national team for all these players to be playing club football? Most of them play club. Most of them played together. That's also, <laughs> that's another thing to point out. If we're going to go back and circle back to these teams, I'm going to explain something. Germany won the World Cup in 2014. A lot of those players played club football together. That happens a lot. We see that, and that is not an uncommon theme for a team to have success because these players have just incredible chemistry. Spain, for that run, a lot of players were playing for Barcelona. And if they weren't, a lot of them played for Real Madrid, right? And Real Madrid knows how Barcelona plays, and they all have that same Spanish style. So Spain, in that golden run, one nothing right and then four nothing against Italy with a World Cup in between that's incredibly hard to do it's one of the craziest things they've done three major international tournaments in a row um Greece beat Portugal in 2004 that one was crazy France um France 2-1 on Italy and um Germany 2-1 on uh, the Czech Republic and we can go back further and further but yeah I mean Germany haven't won since 96 France haven't won since 2000 so that's a lot that's a lot to think about Germany and France right now are in the top three of favored. The last time um, England has never won the Euro. England has literally never won the Euro. So, I mean, well, at least as, as long as they have this documented here. Um, so the, 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 there's a lot there with that narrative where the top three favored in this tournament. I want to point out to this one too, like, I think that it doesn't matter who's favored it, at any point. I mean, I mean, I watched this game too. I mean, Germany was so dominant in this game. So I, I, I'm just going to be curious, can they continue it? And then we have the, the number one favored betting odds team just struggled in this match against this team, right? And so football is crazy. And what, I, what I'm saying here to everyone about this tournament and the reason I am so absolutely excited for this tournament, I think there's going to be a lot of surprises. I think we will see a lot of upsets in this in this tournament. We can look back at this and, you know, when this tournament is over in mid-July and say, wow, we were really wrong, right? And look, it's not to say that the final couldn't end up being what we expect, right? One of the top tier giants playing against one of the other top tier giants. But I think we will see a lot of the mid favorited teams and some of the even the lower favorited teams really exceed expectations. I don't think the gap is the craziest to the top where we've had in past where I've looked at a prime Spain and I said, no chance, no chance, right? You know, even in the even in the recent tournament, England and Italy were really good, and they started playing incredible. You could just even watch it from the group stages that they were probably effectively wise going to get the furthest there. Um, so you know, it's kind of one of those ones where it's going to be a great tournament. I'm very, very, very excited. Um, we, you know, we could do some breakdowns of squads in the future. Um, you know, there's also just to add in, like aside from all this, there's a lot going on here because there's a lot of narrative, right? For a lot of uh, 
outcomes here for the Ballon d'Or and a lot of the team of the year. A lot rides on this tournament. It always does. International years are huge. It's the reason Messi just won the last Ballon d'Or. If Messi did not win that with Argentina, there is no way in hell he's winning the Ballon d'Or over Erling Haaland. It's just what it is. But he went out and he did it. And that's how these awards work. And that's how these team of the years work. So there's a lot riding on this one, man. There's a lot with Germany, right? And there's still a lot to go with Champions League. There's a lot for Jude in this tournament, right? Because if Jude goes and wins the UCO, right? With Real Madrid and England don't perform well in this tournament and he's all right, but they don't win anything. And, and you know, let's say Mbappe goes out and wins the Euro and he's a huge reason why France win. He carries them to an international trophy on his way to Real Madrid. And let's say Vinny goes ahead without Neymar and Copa. And we'll talk about Copa in a future video. And Brazil wins. Well, that Ballon d'Or is not looking as favored for Jude, which right now he's in the driver's seat for. So there's a lot on this tournament. There's a lot. There's a lot if Germany go out and win in this tournament. And, you know, Wirtz is a huge reason for it. There's a lot looking at that then. There's a lot of narratives going on. And there's a lot with Copa as well, right? So there's a lot riding on these international tournaments this summer, which is really exciting. We're getting to this point now where anything can really happen. Really? Anything can happen. And I'll go as far to say this because, I, you know, people call me crazy for this. Dude, if Portugal go out and win and Ronaldo scores a lot of goals with how many he's scored in Saudi this year, I think Messi has even proven in this last year that it's really about the international tournament. So I think there's going to be an argument even for him, even though he's not favored right now because he's playing in Saudi. I, I think there would be an argument. So it's it's exciting to look forward to this tournament. Do I think some of those crazy outcomes are going to happen? No. Um, you know, international ranking wise right now, I don't always believe in these. France is the favorite um, for this tournament. They are the highest ranked team. England has dropped uh, point wise a little bit because of I think some of their more recent outcomes they've dropped a little bit um, Belgium has gone up to number three Portugal's at six Netherlands at seven Spain at eight it's crazy though in the top in the top 10 eight of the teams are European um, because Argentina is one and I think Brazil is five so it's crazy Croatia's even 10 man Germany is 16 Switzerland 19 that's what I'm saying Switzerland have some great players don't sleep on Switzerland in this tournament right we can go back to the betting odds wise. They, they, like, I'm serious. Denmark 21, Ukraine 22, Austria 25, Hungary 26. Um, so it's going to be a very interesting tournament. Goal.com posted some of their like their power rankings. We can kind of go through these and, and look at them for a couple of minutes. We don't have to take forever on it. Georgia is obviously a new entry. I can understand why they're why they're last favorite in this tournament. 23rd is Albania. That one makes sense to me. Poland is 22nd. You know. Um, Serbia's 21st, Scotland 20, Romania 19, Slovenia 18, Czech Republic at 17, Switzerland at 16. Um, I think that's probably a little underrated. I know that they, um, I know that they, uh, you know, maybe haven't had the craziest form in, in all, in all the qualifying, but I think roster wise, they have a good team. Slovakia 15, Ukraine is all the way up at 14. Um, all the way up at 14, they have the power rankings for Ukraine at 14, which is wild. Um, Turkey is at 13, Denmark. So this is just rankings, Croatia. I want to see how they ranked it. So they have Netherlands all the way down to 10. Austria at 9, Hungary at 8, Italy at 7, Spain at 6, Germany at 5, England 4, Belgium they have at 3. Belgium they have at 3, which is which is interesting. Portugal all the way up at 2 and France at 1. You can't fault anyone for having France at 1. Um, Guys, I'm very excited, man. I'm very this is a very exciting summer that we have the opportunity to watch this football together, react to it, talk about it. Let me know in the comments what are your guys' early feelings um on this tournament? What do you guys feel like? Who do you think is a team that maybe it might surprise some people? I will tell you this. I think over time these tournaments really are important with chemistry in the team and a solid team from back to front. Team players that know their roles. It is not always the best team uh, or players winning in this tournament. It's the best overall team. It's not always the best team of players. Chemistry is very, very important in these tournaments. And that's what it takes for a lot of these teams to make runs um, and, and, you know, get after it. So, you know, a lot of it, though, I would say as well, you know, you cannot neglect the fact that group stage is a huge deal. Right. Group stage. Uh, oh, my God. I just skipped it. Sorry. Uh, group stage is a massive deal in this tournament. Right. So that is something not to look past. It does help a lot to get favorable, you know, seedings. And let's be honest, though, 24 teams in this tournament, you know, there's not going to be more than a couple probably that are free wins. Everyone's going to be you have to go out and perform. And that's the beauty of these international football tournaments. Right. So very excited. Let me know what you guys think. Just a little bit of a look into all this. And uh, I appreciate you guys chilling, man. Much love to everybody. Have a good evening. Peace.